Hello, everybody. I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes, and we're back with Gwen's Bookish Ramblings. And today, let's talk guilty pleasures. Now, um, apparently, Linnea Sinclair is a Rita Award winning author. I actually didn't bother looking into what that is. I, however, would argue that what she is is an author who writes the same book over and over and over again. Luckily, I really, really enjoy that one book she's written over and over again, but um, it's, it's kind of the same thing. For those who are wondering, the book that she's written over and over again is Person with Some Sort of Superpowers of Some Kind, Alien superpowers, magic superpowers, cyborg superpowers, meets an ordinary schlub, and the ordinary schlub uh, falls in love with them. They conceal who they are from the ordinary schlub. It eventually all comes to a head. They stop the invading aliens or zombies or whatever, and everybody lives happily ever after. It pretty much follows the same arc, book after book after book. But, uh, it's well written, and most importantly, to me at least, it's very funny. She's very, very funny. Um, on top of which, of course, uh, there's, there's, you know, sufficient plot to deal with the fact that these are primarily romances, in my opinion, but there's enough plot that those of us who don't really like a romance novel in which the whole plot is will they, won't they, uh, those of us for whom that's just unbelievably boring, you can find a lot more of interest in this. Um, so what is An Accidental Goddess about? It's a slightly unusual sub-sub-genre that I would call a fantasy science fiction novel. What would that be? That's a novel where it's set in outer space with you know, spaceships and and humans wandering through the depths of space. Um, and also, there are people with magic powers. Our protagonist, or one of our two protagonists, the female lead, um, whose full name is something to the effect of Ghislaine Siren uh, Rothallan Davre, uh, just Gilly, as she prefers to be called, is from a race of people who have magic, or so they call it. She is a sorceress. Her official title is Kia Sidira. And at the start of the book, she wakes up to discover that she has fallen through a hole in the space-time continuum, and while she was gone for 340-some years, uh, the people who she had been sent to help drive off invading alien forces had declared her to be a goddess, and there are now shrines in her name, and she's kind of taken aback on this because, well, uh, she's not a goddess. She is, in fact, uh, actually somewhat like the Doctor in Doctor Who, somebody who didn't do so well in the Academy, who wasn't everybody's favorite person, and, uh, so she's a little bit disturbed by this turn of events. The male lead is, uh, Admiral Reinen Macarian, who is, uh, Basically, he's been assigned to this space station to pull it into shape in advance of a brand new technology that will improve speed and whatnot of, of space travel for, the, uh, for his people. And uh, over the course of the book, they fall in love, and by degrees, she's forced to reveal to him first that she is Raharan, which is her species name, in effect, and not one of his people, uh, that she's got some superpowers, but not the superpowers he thinks, that she is a member of the military, but not all that high up, that she's actually a sorceress, and then finally they all discover that she's actually the person that they've been thinking for the last 300 years was a goddess, and it turns out that they were wrong. You have 
a kind of hilariously sad moment at close to the end of the book when one of the uh, military people she's working with says, I prayed to you. And she's forced to respond, well, I'm, I'm sure one of the real gods heard your prayers. Because, you know, she's not a goddess. Um, the hilarity in this comes in the form, for me at least mostly, of, uh, of Lieutenant Toby, who is a great devotee of the goddess Kiyosidera. And he has seen the holy hologram of her uh, in the temple, and it's a holy hologram that was taken most recently before she got sucked into the hole in the space-time continuum, and, uh, and he sees her wearing the same green sweater and green leggings she was wearing in that photograph and uh, immediately falls to his knees in worship. And um, the whole, th his constant attempts to figure out how to balance the fact that he's supposed to be hiding from everybody that she is a goddess, that his goddess has asked him to not treat her like a goddess, that his commanding officer is dating a goddess and doesn't know he's dating a goddess, um, it, it actually, it puts him in an extremely awkward position and makes his role in this whole book really hilarious to read because you feel really bad for him being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, you can picture it as being a little bit like if you discovered your best friend was dating Jesus and didn't know it, and you know it's Jesus, and you know you should treat Jesus with the respect due to Jesus, but Jesus just asked you to treat him like Bob, because he's pretending to be Bob, and your friend thinks they're just dating Bob and doesn't know Bob is actually Jesus, and it would make you act really, really weird. Um... And I'm, I'm, I'm just picking Jesus, by the way, as a general example. If you would rather I swap out, I don't know, Krishna or 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 uh, I don't know, one of the Buddhasattvas, since according to all reports, the Buddha is supposed to have become at one with the universe and therefore would never actually do anything again. Nonetheless, you, you, you understand my point. Um, so, you have a large portion of this book is just taken up with her angsting about the fact that she's lying to everybody, but also desperately trying to keep from telling anybody things, because if she tells them, A, they'll treat her like a goddess, and B, then she has to destroy their entire culture. Um, because, of course, they built up a whole culture around worshipping this imaginary goddess, and she doesn't want to cause complete civil unrest. Um, she has a sentient AI spaceship, a crystal ship, because her ship is made out of magic crystal, because let's not forget, she's magic. She's got magic. They call it magic, she calls it magic. We're not bringing up in the slightest Clark's Law as, it, as far as she and her people are concerned. There is no sufficiently advanced technology. There's just magic. Um, which is one of the things that makes this such a weird book to read. Um, is, is that it's basically fantasy on a spaceship. It's... It's like if you dropped Harry Potter into an episode of, of Star Trek, and I'm sure people have read those fanfics. Um, and it's, it's weird. It's really weird. Um, but weird is what makes it entertaining. Now, the one thing that I have to mention, of course, is this is the cover of my copy, which I actually bought only recently, finally giving in and admitting that I wanted to own one. But, um, 
this is the cover that I saw when I first got the book, and honestly, in a lot of ways, uh, I find this to be a much better cover. It's just that bit more lurid, that bit more dopey. Um, the artist who actually I was able to find a credit for, his name is, if I'm not mistaken, Dave Seeley. I'll have to double check that. It will be in the description below. Um, I do my best to put all of the attributions and, and information about the books into the description below. Um, anyhow, so we have what is clearly supposed to be Admiral Makarian, and there is what is supposed to be uh, Gilly Davre with her crystal sword, because she has a magic purple crystal sword, which is as they put it in the book, too long to be a knife and too short to be a sword. It's kind of, um, it's kind of like one of those Roman stabbing swords, whatever they were called. Um, and I just, I just enjoy the, the sheer silliness of this book. Um, I enjoy her relationship with her ship, Simon, who's kind of like a cross between annoying best friend and annoying dad. I, uh, I, I like the way that Admiral Makarian is constantly, constantly in conflict with himself about whether or not he should be doing what he's doing. And, uh, basically... I can't recommend this book highly enough for anybody who enjoys uh, soft sci-fi and or fantasy and romance and something with something of a plot um, and basically no angst whatsoever. There, There is no angst. I mean, you feel sad for all these people who've just had their complete belief system shattered, but... Uh, you can't, uh, you, you don't feel really, really bad for them. I, I do find that the ending feels a little bit rushed and a little bit cramped, but the first, oh, seven-eighths of the book are fun and silly and just that little bit of dramatic to, just that little bit of dramatic to, to keep the action moving. Um, honestly, I think that the blurb here, being divine, has never been more dangerous or seductive, uh, describes absolutely nothing in this book. But, um, you know, you don't really read blurbs for, for accurate description, at least not ones on the covers of books. So... In the end, um, I, I think that this is a book for people who don't worry about whether or not somebody's going to see the cover and think that they're just not worth spending time with. Um, this is a book for people who enjoy light fiction, who are unashamed to admit that they enjoy light fiction. And uh, this is one of those books for which I will freely admit that I'm a shallow, shallow person for enjoying. But you know what? If you like it, and it isn't hurting anybody, which this book really isn't, uh, you might as well just enjoy it. So... This has been my book for the day. Um, I hope everybody has, anybody who is listening to this has enjoyed listening to it. Um, and I hope I will see at least somebody listening uh, here again soon. So, thank you all. Have a good day. And, uh, well, I guess that was everything. And I... Fare you all well.